So welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to continue the build on the Billington Ice and Bottling Company. So stay tuned and we'll jump into this. So welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart and this is video four of the Billington Ice and Bottling Company. Uh, we'll see how far I can get in this. The last video was a little short. Uh, I do have quite a few things I would like to accomplish this week, but we'll see how uh, much my uh, personal life will free up in time so I can get some of this accomplished for you. So we're just going to jump into this and see how far we get. Uh, yeah, with no further ado, let's just do this. Now there's several things we need to get working on. Uh, you know, we had these buildings just about to the point we could mount them on a base before, and you see all three structures here. And you know, I need to do just a little bit more work to those to get them ready. I did finish all the lines on this basic mat board, which I'm gonna mount the building to so I can add all the first story walls around the main structures. So to mount the buildings down to this, I'm just going to take a bunch of this square stock and I'm going to glue it around the outer walls at the base of the walls so that I can glue these down to the mat board. The uh, thickness of the, the, the wall board itself really isn't thick enough to get a good glue bond. So I'm just adding these to all these structures to see building C, here's building A, you know, and I'm just clamping these on, letting them set up for a while, and then I'm going to come back like this and just start gluing them all down to the mat board on those lines that I had laid out. And I'm starting here with building C. Now building B, you can see I did add a little bit of height to the building. Uh, when I made those corner posts, I made them a little short. And this wood I didn't paint because it's not going to show up when I put the first story roofs around it. But then I come back and glue uh, building A to this. And uh, you know, now it's all one solid unit glued down to this base. Now there's a whole lot of work to do to all this yet, and uh, you know now we got to start with these one-story walls. We have this little tiny wall between building A and C, and I'm just going to come with the you know the same type of uh, clapboard siding board that I used for all the other buildings, and it's going to be used for all these walls around the first story as well. So I go ahead and cut the two pieces that make that wall that go between building C and building A. Then it, the, you know, the one side has a window in it, so I go ahead and lay that out and cut the window out as well. And while I'm painting all these, I want to do a bunch of these all at one time while I'm painting. So next wall I'm going to start with is this dock wall that's between A and B buildings. So I start off with, I cut the length and the height that I need to this, and then I'm just going to come back and lay out all the doors and windows in this. You know, it has one regular people door, a freight door, and two windows in this side, so we're just going to cut that out and lay that out. Now this other side, this is the only picture I have of this, but you can see there's six windows down this long side of this. And the building, but the room between building A and C, I shortened a good bit, so the windows are closer together when I lay out this wall and go ahead and cut these out. But now that I have four wall pieces, I'm just going to take them out and uh, you know spray paint all these white so I can get the color on the walls. And then I have basically four walls to start with. Now, yeah, the paint made these curl just a little bit, so I'm coming back and putting some bracing behind, in the middle of the walls between the windows and adding doors and windows to all these, and also that same foundation board so I can glue them down to the mat board as well. And then I just come back and start gluing all those to the mat board in place so we can build the whole first story building around all these other structures. And I start with this dock wall and then this one long sided wall here and uh, you know get those all nice and square and glued into place. And then we need, you know, this real long back wall on this. And I don't have a good picture of this, but I know there's a regular door here. 
and you know kind of a freight door and a people door and a window so anyway I know the length so I go ahead and cut it to length now this wall I am making a couple foot uh, taller than the other two uh, one-story walls that I previously glued down to the board. I'm sure you, what I'm going to do to correct some of that situation later on. Uh, but you know, I go ahead and lay out the doors and windows, cut them out, and put white paint on it, and you know, then come back and mount the doors and windows into those openings. And after putting some of that same foundation, uh, you know, four by four lumber underneath the bottom of it and on top and you know a couple brace boards in the middle of the wall I go ahead and mount that to the board just the same as I did the other walls and you can see this is just a little taller than those other walls I'll explain why in a minute but I'm gonna go ahead and add that extra height to those other walls because I just you know when I started looking at roof lines the roof lines weren't going to work out right that's why I made that other wall taller and I'm coming back and adding this to that and with this board I'm putting in place here for the roof line it kind of gives an ex explanation as to why I did that you know those first two walls that we cut out now we're going to come back and add those on between building C and building A and uh, you know that's that's most of the first story walls at this point in time and we basically have the whole structure in place around the buildings now I am going to go ahead and lay out uh, the roof on building 8 because remember this has a dog house on top of it and initially I made these a little bit too steep so when I came back and glued all these uh, roof supports around the outside of the wall I brought it down to the height I need you can see the old line that was a little steep and I just cut a piece of mat board to make that roof out of and this is just setting in there temporarily but then I need to make the dog house that goes up on the roof so there's access to this flat roof on this building so I find a door and I just make the dog house based on that door basically you know, I hold the wood up inside that roof line and get the angles for the two long walls and go ahead and put paint on all that, cut the door out, go ahead and cut some corner posts for the building so I can glue the walls all together. And then I mount the door in the one end wall, glue the corner posts onto both the long walls, and then I can come back and glue the halves together. And then once that's done, come back and glue the two halves and I have a whole structure. And you know, this is just a good access up onto the roof of the building, which does show in that one picture that I had. And I'm just going to set it on that temporary roof for the time being here to kind of give me a, an idea of how it's going to work and set up on there. And you know, I, th I think it's going to work rather nice actually and it's going to replicate what was in that one picture. So it's good. So there you have video four in the series of the Billington Ice House. You know, once again, I didn't get quite as far as I wanted to this week, but I got a good bit accomplished on the building, and I'm okay for no more time than I had to spend with it. I did get a lot accomplished in that amount of time. Uh, I was hoping to get further along with maybe getting some of the roofs mounted and all that, but, you know, we'll have to start off with that in the next uh, session. I'm also heading to Virginia this week, so, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the videos are going to work. i got to be down there for four, five, six days or so, and I'm going to try to get everything done as quick as I can and get back. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to take the stuff with me and work while I'm there or not. Uh, so we'll see what happens with next week's video. I do have something else I may throw in and then finish the or go on with the building in the next week. But we'll see what happens. Maybe I can get another one done and out in time to uh, get next week's up to. I'm really you know, enjoying this build. I like this building. Uh, it was gone you know 60 years before I was born uh, but it's just a really a nice structure and was really uh, a very important structure in the town that I model even though it was a little previous to my era that I do model but I wanted to include it in the layout it was just a very historical building for the area and you know it adds a nice little small industry as a siding and uh, this did have a siding next to it. I'm not sure if they used it to ice off 
uh, wooden reefers back then or not. Uh, they very well may have. Uh, you know, a lot of these small towns did do a lot of uh, local icing and re-icing of cars. There wasn't a lot of produce in this town, so uh, you know the, the cars wouldn't have originated from here to go elsewhere, but they would have came through here to go to a lot of other smaller towns. So it's very possible that they could have stopped here to top off with ice so they could further go on to their destination. And anyway, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I hope you're enjoying this build as much as I am. And I hope it's inspiring you to jump out there and uh, scratch build something for your model layout. Uh, that's why I'm sharing all this information to show people that it's not that complicated and you, you can really build anything that you want to build. Uh, just figuring it out and getting reference material. You know, this one I didn't have a lot to work from, but I, I had enough that, you know, I can make it look and replicate what was there during the period of time. So uh, I'm going to be happy with it when it's done. It's going to be a nice little structure. So anyway, thanks once again for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, the key to all this is just happy model railroading.